Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. In today's video, we're going to start with a really fun project from my mystery box. Now don't fret if you were unable to get the mystery box. You can absolutely still buy the products that are in the box and I'll link everything we used down below in the description for you guys so you can easily get all the things that we used here. It's really, really fun product and I'm super excited to show you guys how to work with a Caesar Holographic Rainbow HTV. This is one of my favorite products which is why I put it into my mystery box. You can see the beautiful color shift and it's really fun to work with. But this is kind of a special product as it will kind of change colors based on the product that you put it on, the color. So if you'll notice, you'll see through this and it's really easy to see through it. You can see through it right here. So depending on what color your blank is, will depend on what color it comes out. So I made a few different colored popsicle holders for you guys so that we could show you what it all looks like. This is the one that you'll receive in the mystery box, but they do come in several other colors and you can really see that the colors are very, very different depending on what color you put the product on. So that's one thing we're going to discuss in the video. I'm going to show you guys how to set up the cut, then how to cut it all cut settings and the press settings. So let's get started. First thing that we'll do in Design Space is make a little template. That way we know our text will fit in our little koozies. And I'm making six total koozies with six different colors to show you guys what the holographic looks like on all the different colors. Because the stuff that was in the mystery box does tend to change what it looks like based on the color product you put it on. So I just thought it would be a fun way to show you guys what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do is go to Shapes and open up a square. And I'm going to need two different sizes because our sharks and the lobster that I'm using are a slightly different size than just the straight rectangle holders. So what I'm going to do is unlock the square, which is right down here in the lower left hand corner. And then I'm going to change the width. I can go about um, five inches wide on the rectangle. So we'll start with those. I can actually go a little bit longer. I can actually go, um, I can go six inches ish, but we'll put it at 5.5. .5. That way it's not right at the edge. And it's about two inches wide, but again, I don't wanna go all the way edge to edge because I wanna make sure that it doesn't like distort too much when they're using it. So those are gonna be for our rectangle. And then on our shark, because again, he's a little bit different. He's a little smaller. He's only gonna be able to fit about an inch and a quarter by about five inches. So what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead, open up another square. And we'll do the same thing. We're going to unlock it. And we know that our width, we can go about five inches and our height is about an inch and a quarter. That way we just, again, know that they'll fit. So we'll just do some general, we're just going to do the same word for all of them. That way it, you guys can really see that it does change color. I just think it's going to be a little bit easier if we just keep the design very simple and that way you guys can really see because this is more to show you guys how to cut your holographic and what it looks like on the different colors because it's gonna look very, very different based on whatever color you put it on. So again, I just wanna do something pretty simple, nothing crazy. I think this one would be good, I think. Um, I don't really like how thin that one is. It's not, enough, not really tall enough. So again, you just sort of play around and find what font you want. But again, I'm just gonna use something kind of thick, um, nothing crazy just so that we can really see what it looks like. I just want to show you guys how easy this is to work with. This is one of my favorite products. Again, I put it in my uh, mystery box because of that, because I do love it so much. It's so fun, it's so easy to work with, and it's just a really nice product. Now what we can always do is if we like this font, which I do, I'm just gonna go ahead and unlock this font, which is just the same way like you unlock the square, and click this little unlock button, and I'm gonna stretch it out so it's a little bit longer and it still looks okay in this font. I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is duplicate this 
and I'm going to move one of them over into our shark space and I'm going to click unlock again so that I can kind of fit it into the space for our shark. That looks pretty good and again I just want to keep those very simple easy to do that way you guys can see how simple this truly is to make it's very very easy so we don't need the squares we don't want to cut those at all so now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I duplicate both of these so that they are um there's enough to cut on all of it so what I'm just going to do is select both and click duplicate twice because I have three of each style. So I have three rectangles, I have two sharks, and then I have a lobster, but the lobster fits the same size as the shark. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that. So we can move them over so you guys can see. Now they are pretty similar in size. So when we go to make them and put them on, we will need to be careful to make sure that we're using the right sized product, but it shouldn't be too hard to tell once they're out and cut. So now that we've gotten to this point, let's go ahead and click make it. It's going to cut it all perfectly fine on our holographic. You can see everything is lined up. It's all in the right order. Now, let's say that you are not familiar with this product and you're not sure how to cut it or to heat press it. There's a great place to go and I'm going to link this down below for you guys as well. If you just go over to 143 Vinyl, what you can do is go right here to the 143 Vinyl Resources and Reference Documents. Click on that and there is this great place right here, the Material Cutter and Press Settings. If you click on that, it's gonna open this page. You can click here to download the file and what you'll get is this really handy dandy file and they add to this all the time. They put, if they get new materials in and things like that, we, this is constantly updated. It's really, really easy to use. So what you'll do is scroll down and find the Caesar holographic. So you'll see it's all alphabetical order. So we have right here, kind of in the center of the screen, Caesar holographic, I'll highlight it so you guys can see where I am looking, right there. And it's gonna tell you what cut setting to use and it lists both Cricut and Silhouette and Brother Scan and Cut. So on the Cricut, which we are using, we're gonna use the light cardstock setting. I found the glitter iron on setting didn't work as well for me, but the light card cardstock setting works perfectly. If you're cutting on the Silhouette, you can use the plain cardstock, Blade 3, Speed 4, Force 22. And the Brothers Scan and Cut's gonna be a Blade 2, Speed 1, Pressure 3. It also gives us our pressing temp and time. So we wanna press this at 320 degrees for 15 to 20 seconds. And the pressure level and peel, this is really important. With the HTV, a lot of people don't know that there are hot and cold peel products. It's really important to know which yours is because if yours is a hot peel and you wait until it's cold, it sometimes might not peel correctly. And the same thing, if it's a cold peel product and you go to peel while it's hot, it's likely not going to stick. So we're gonna use a medium pressure and we are gonna cold peel this, meaning we're gonna let this cool completely before we take our backing off. So that's all we need to do. This is a great document. I don't tend to print mine, but you're more than welcome to, but I don't print it because it is updated when they get new materials. So what we'll do now is go back over to Cricut Design Space. What you'll do now is hit the word continue down here at the bottom and it's gonna load our cut settings. And you'll remember that we checked the cut settings over in the cut settings document over at 143. So it tells us that we need to use our light cardstock setting. And then it just tells us what tools we need to load. We just need to make sure we have our fine point blade. This is a really easy product to work with and you don't need anything special. Let's go over to the machine so I can show you guys how to load this on your mat and how to cut. So we're ready to put our vinyl on the mat. Now you can see it's really, really shiny on this side. And then on this side, it doesn't have any of that sheen. So one thing to remember is with vinyl, with HTV, is that it's always gonna be carrier sheet down. Now in this case, yes, we do have the shiny side versus the not shiny side. But a lot of the new HTV doesn't necessarily have a shiny um, carrier sheet. So you just wanna make sure that you know that it's carrier sheet side down and you can always check by peeling up a little corner. You're not gonna damage it. It's never gonna cut the tiny corner up here anyways. So what I'm gonna do is take the plastic off of my mat. And the way I like to load, especially if I'm using like a longer sheet, is I will slide my mat under my Cricut door and then I'll put my vinyl on top of my Cricut and then I just line my vinyl up with the top of my mat 
and make sure to lay it down nice and even. That way you're not trying to lay the vinyl down all at once. It can get kind of hard to do that sometimes. So I'm just gonna make sure to press it all the way down. And you'll note I didn't cut my sheet down at all. There's no need to. We're gonna use that craft knife to cut the vinyl out. Make sure that you do mirror this. I did forget to mention that previously. So make sure that you mirror your project before you cut. We're gonna go ahead and load this and make sure that we are ready to go. To load this, you just wanna slide this into your machine. You wanna make sure that you're under the little white tabs and you wanna give a little pressure as you press the load button. That just makes sure that your mat loads correctly and that your vinyl is gonna cut. All we're gonna do now is press the Cricut Go button and I'll let you guys watch this cut. Once your vinyl's done cutting, you just want to hit the unload button. We can take this off of the mat, but first thing I want to do is get my craft knife because we don't need to use this whole sheet. It only cut certain parts with our vinyl. So that's where this craft cutter really comes in handy and I use it all the time for this. You can cut directly on your mat. It's not gonna cut through your mat, which is a really nice thing. Plus, you can use the grid to help you cut a straight line. So I can see the grid through this vinyl, which is super helpful. So all I'm gonna do, and I cannot cut a straight line to save my life, but this knife really makes it very, very simple to do. So all I'm doing is just cutting down my vinyl and again, this just helps you save vinyl when you're not wasting it, and this stuff is so pretty. So we do have a little space right here that we could save. It's up to you if you want to save it or not. I am like a psycho about saving like my little scraps. I actually do tend to use some of my small scraps, so it's really, really nice. So all I'm gonna do is make sure to replace the cap on my cutter. The one thing I love about this is this cap, because A, you can store it really easily and not stab yourself constantly like I tend to, and it stops it from rolling off of your desk. So it won't roll anywhere because it does have that little handle, which is super nice. So now all we have to do is take our vinyl off of our mat, and you can do this in a couple of ways, but I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this part first, which is where I cut. And then I'm gonna come back and get this section right here. Now what we'll do is go ahead and weed this. Now you can actually use your craft cutter to weed if you'd like to. You can use pin pen, but I think for this one, I'll just try my craft cutter and see how it goes. So all I'm gonna do is just grab a corner. And again, you wanna be very careful. This is very, very sharp. So I'm gonna grab a corner. And because this is a pretty easy to weed project, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it with the craft cutter. Now this vinyl does tend to rip a little bit, but that's okay, like where it has like these small little spots with the S's, it does like to actually rip there instead of it staying together, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and finish weeding this and then we can apply it. I'm just gonna set this back down on my mat so that I can cut them apart. So again, I'll just use my craft cutter. And then you don't have to do straight, just make sure you don't cut through any of the decal. So I'm just kind of cutting a line down this section just to keep them separated. Again, it doesn't have to be straight, but now you'll be able to have two separate pieces. And then you'll cut between them this way. That way, again, you have the separate decals. You don't want them all stuck together. You could use scissors for this as well, but since we already have our craft cutter out, we're just gonna go ahead and use this. Again, I just have this on my mat to protect my surface. I don't wanna cut through my table, because these are really, really sharp. You can weed on your mat. I don't like to. I find that it makes the mat not as sticky for as long, because any pressure that you add to your mat does remove some of that stickiness. Also, you tend to touch your mat a lot more. You can see that my hand is physically on my mat. This is not my best mat, so I'm not really worried about it now, but when I have a new mat, I don't like to do any of this on it. You can get a self-healing mat as well that you can put on your table to protect your surface. So there's a lot of options that you can use as far as the best way to do this. So now we'll go ahead and take all of these off. 
And we're gonna get our, we're gonna use the little Easy Press Mini to do these because they're really small and there's no real need to heat up the big press. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these off and then we're gonna get all of our koozies lined up and then we can get everything pressed down. I'm excited to show you guys how easy this is. While we're waiting for the mini press to heat up, I'll go ahead and line up all of my little popsicle holders that we're using. So like I said, we got this shark in our mystery box. I had this one from earlier, and you can get all these on the 143 vinyl site. And then I have this fun lobster. So I like to line mine up the direction that I want them, and then I've put all the decals kind of on top of each other with which size they are. So these are the smaller ones, so these go on our sharks and our lobster. And the transfer tape on this one, so the carrier sheet, is not like sticky at all. So keep that in mind when you're doing this, that these do not stick down. So you'll want to be careful, or you can use some heat tape, but we'll just be careful with these. And hopefully you guys can already see the difference in the color, but I'll show these up really close once we get them all pressed on. Now you can do these ones in any direction that you want, but I like to go in the same direction. So I just wanna get these all laid out. And again, they don't stick, so that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this because they will shift, but I'm just putting them down right now to make sure I have all the right sizing, which I do, that looks good. So you can see we've got a bunch of different colors. We've got some dark colors and some bright colors and another like kind of medium color. So what we'll do is we're gonna take a piece of parchment paper. This is just a scrap that I had laying around and you're gonna lay it over your vinyl and your koozie. And then you're gonna take your heat press or your mini press or your iron, whatever you have and press it down onto your design. And you're gonna count to about 18 to 20 seconds. I usually do about 18 seconds. So I'm cheating because I'm using the counter on my camera so I can see about where 18 seconds is. And I'm giving it a little bit of pressure. You can see I have my one hand on top of my wrist and the other hand on top of the um, Easy Press Mini here. So then all I'm gonna do is move over to the word cool and I'm gonna do the same thing and put one hand on top of the other. I'm not pressing with all my weight, but I am giving it some pressure. You don't need a ton, but you will need some, and these are kind of squishy. So like you'll wanna make sure that you do apply some pressure. But again, I'm not having to stand on it. I'm not putting all my weight on it. I am just giving it a decent amount of pressure. So once we've pressed that, we can move this over to the side and let it cool. And we can move on to our next one. So I'll do these ones a little bit quicker. That way you guys are not stuck watching them. I'm gonna slide these out of the way. And we will just go ahead and do these in a fast motion. Now that we've let them cool for a little while, again, you wanna make sure they're completely cool before you peel your carrier sheets. You can pull your carrier sheets off. This is my favorite part. So all we're gonna do is just peel our carrier sheets. And again, remember, these are gonna look like different colors on each one. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this, but I'll give you guys a good like up close view of them because they really do look so neat. And they're such a fun, product and they do look like different colors on the different um, uh, koozies, which is really fun. This yellow one might be my favorite. It's got a really cool green tone to it. So I know it's really hard to see right now, but I will show you guys up close and personal what these look like. I'll give you guys a nice good view. So let me go ahead and get these all set for you guys and I can show you what they all look like. Here are the finished koozies. They came out so cool. So like I said, the colors look really different and you can really see how different it looks on this neon yellow versus the neon pink. You can see how much darker this one looks. This one picked up a lot of those greens. So pretty. And then this one looks more gold colored. Really, really cool. I love how different they look. You can really see the difference in the color shift. And then over here with the lobster, he's got more of a, yeah, like a red, gold tone to the greens, which is super fun. And this one picked up a lot more pink and purples. And then this one is more like, I would call it 
rose gold and greens so pretty but I just love how different they all look on the different colors and that's one of the things that's really fun about this vinyl is that it does pick up different colors based on what you put it on so it can be really really versatile I think it looks good on every color and it's just easy to work with and it's super super fun this product is really fun if you guys didn't get the mystery box I'll put links to all the products down in the description box down below for you because you can get these products at 143vinyl.com and you can buy them individually. They have tons of different popsicle holder styles. They've got a bunch of different of the holographic, but this one specifically is the one that will pick up the color of your product and kind of change color based on what you put it on. These are so fun and I love how they came out. This was such an easy project to do. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you check out the rest of my YouTube channel. I have lots of great videos on how to do all sorts of different crafts. And I would love for you to be a part of my crafty family. So please hit that subscribe button down below if you have not yet. There are so many more amazing videos to come using not only things from my mystery box, but also Lots of really fun products that you may or may not have tried yet. I hope you all have a wonderful day and happy crafting.